This video is an introduction to primary prevention of acute rheumatic fever. Information is derived from the 2020 Australian Guideline for Prevention, Diagnosis and Management of Acute Rheumatic Fever and Rheumatic Heart Disease, 3rd edition. The learning objectives are to define primary prevention of acute rheumatic fever, identify first-line treatment of strep A throat and skin infections. Primary prevention aims to interrupt the link between strep A infection and the abnormal immune response to the strep A infection that causes acute rheumatic fever, ARF. This requires early identification and treatment of strep A infections of the throat and skin to prevent ARF. The mainstay of primary prevention of ARF is early treatment of throat and skin infections. Recommendations for primary prevention in Australia are based on a person's level of risk of ARF. Knowing which people need prompt treatment with antibiotics for throat and skin infections is an important learning point for health staff working with populations at high risk of ARF. Throat infections. Strep A is associated with between 20 and 40% of throat infections, which include tonsillitis and pharyngitis. Symptoms and signs of strep A throat infections typically include pain and difficulty swallowing, fever, enlarged tonsils with exudate, enlarged tender lymph nodes, and reluctance to eat and drink. Young people in high-risk categories for ARF should be treated with antibiotics before strep A swab results are known. Penicillin is the first treatment for strep A throat infections due to its narrow spectrum and efficacy against strep A. One intramuscular benzathine benzyl penicillin injection is the preferred treatment, and if this is not possible, oral phenoxymethyl penicillin should be given twice a day for 10 days. Non-penicillin treatments are available for people with allergies to penicillin. Skin infections. Strep A can enter the body through a break in the skin due to insect bites, scabies, head lice, tinea and minor trauma to cause skin infection. These infections are called impetigo and pyoderma. Lesions are usually round or linear one to two centimetres in size and have a pus or a thick crust. Any child in a high risk group with one or more purulent or crusted sores should be treated to prevent ARF. The recommended treatment is oral cotrimoxazole, dosage by weight orally twice a day for three days or one intramuscular benzathine benzyl penicillin injection. Families should be consulted to help decide the best treatment for their child. People who are already receiving regular intramuscular benzathine benzyl penicillin injections for secondary prophylaxis still need treatment for strep A throat and skin infections. This is necessary because the level of penicillin in the body wanes by about seven days to reach a prophylactic level. This level is lower than a required treatment level. So, if the last regular injection was given seven or more days before the infection, recommended antibiotics to treat a skin or throat infection should be given. If an injection is used for treatment, the date of the next regular secondary prophylaxis injection should be reset to the prescribed frequency, that is 21 or 28 days, from the date of the treatment injection. In summary, children presenting with one or more purulent or crusted skin sores who are identified as being at high risk of ARF, including people who have a history of confirmed ARF or RHD, should be treated with antibiotics irrespective of other clinical features. People presenting with a sore throat who are identified as being at high risk of ARF, including people who have a history of confirmed ARF, or established RHD should be treated with antibiotics irrespective of other clinical features. More information is available on the RHD Australia website and in the 2020 Australian Guideline for Prevention, Diagnosis and Management of Acute Rheumatic Fever and Rheumatic Heart Disease, 3rd edition.